Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Easy. We're doing part three of a three-part series. Beginner's Guide to the Three-Star Attack. If you watched the first two videos, they were basically on planning out the attack and to identify different objectives that you want to accomplish during the attack. And if I did my job well enough at all, you what you've taken from those videos is that there's a process involved before you even start every attack and basically going over all the different steps that you want to try to accomplish during your attack and this might sound like uh, a bunch of mundane and pointless things to try to do all through every attack but there's actually a reason behind it I'm gonna go over some of that stuff while you, you you'll see some stuff coming across the bottom of the screen uh, there's just more tips on, on how to do everything but uh, going over going through all of the planning parts of the attack what this does for you is it gets you in the mindset that the attacks are bigger than what you're doing right then and there and believe it or not that's gonna make a big difference for you once you start thinking about things kind of outside the box and you start and you start scouting the bases a little differently and you're looking at different points in the bases instead of looking at the base thinking I'm going to drop my troops here and I'm gonna go for the town hall in the middle here instead of looking at things in such a narrow perspective you'll get a much more broad perspective on the different things you want to try to accomplish in your attack and once you start thinking like that you'll start understanding what it takes to do these three-star attacks and you'll start trying to accomplish some of the objectives before you even start the attack that last attack was a was a great example of building the wrong army uh, they they built an army that didn't have key elements in it didn't have any tanks so they had some high-powered uh, high power troops that went nowhere because there were no tanks to protect them. Uh, th in this particular part of the video, they dismantled the clan castle troops wonderfully. This is a lower leveled uh, player and those Valkyries can actually take out the entire army. So they went and surrounded the Valkyries with, uh, with the archers, did a great job of it. But again, you'll see another very similar mistake being made here where now they put in a bunch of archers and a bunch of wizards and there's really nothing to protect the archers and wizards so even though they had great tactics to start off the attack the attack won't be a three star because they didn't have all the elements of a three star attack so there's a lot more to the three star attack than just than just going after the base with strong troops because if you don't have the right combination of strong troops then the attack will still go nowhere so parts of the part of the elements of the three star one of the most important parts that we went over in the first two videos is to is the use of a kill squad and you will you will try to pull their clan castle troops out of the clan castle you'll lure them into a corner if possible you'll use your kill squad to, to kill the clan castle troops and then at that point that's where you're going to begin your attack from so already you have some some kind of basic but yet very very important fundamentals on starting your attack and um, this is what I like to do in most videos is cut off the bottom of the screen so you can't see anything <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> uh, well what's going on in the bottom is is the Valkyrie runs down the bottom again and uh, the the player called the one he was able to take care of the clan castle troops once again and this time there's some different elements in this attack that we hadn't seen in the first two attacks they have the Giants which are tanks then they have the hog riders which are your defense only troops and so now we have some of the key elements of a, of a three, hour, three star attack because you have your tanks that are going to protect some of your smaller troops that, ha that are the high uh, damage per second troops like your, like your wizards and like your, uh, like your archers or all these other troops that don't have the hit points but they do the damage per second. And then you have your defense only troops which are going to run around and take out all these defenses which will actually prolong the life of, your, um, of, of the rest of your troops. So to quickly recap, we are going to pull the enemy clan castle troops out of the clan castle. We will try to lure them off into a corner if possible. We will try to kill those clan castle troops with what we call a kill squad. From that point, from that corner, from that area that we killed their clan castle troops, we will then progress into the base by taking out all the trash buildings or the buildings on the outside of the wall with this kill squad. And then we will enter the base by using a jump spell or using wall breakers to try to prevent your kill squad from walking around the outside of the base and going sightseeing like we like to call it so once we have entered the base and we are starting to take care of these key objectives and these key objectives will kind of depend on the attack that you're using if you're using an air attack 
uh, key objectives will be to take out the enemy heroes, the, the Archer Queen and Barbarian King, and then to try to take out the air defenses, as many as you can. Uh, if you're doing a ground attack, some of your key objectives will be to try to find all those areas that they may have the hidden traps like the giant bombs or the Tessa Towers. And you try to dismantle all those things before you bring in your defense only troops, which will be your balloons or your hog riders. Which are another key element of the three star attack is to use defense only troops as your main body of troops. Instead of just bringing in a big giant pile of troops that you put in at one time and keep your fingers crossed and hope they clear out the whole base. <laughs> That doesn't happen to your town hall 11. <laughs> so we pull the clan castle troops we kill the clan castle troops we go from that spot we try to enter the base with what we call a funnel we try to funnel your, your kill squad into the base once your kill squad is into the base and not walking around the outside of it then we bring in the defense only troops at this point we're well on the way to a three-star attack uh, the, the another key element to the three-star attack is to use what we call cleanup troops and that is that simply means to save a certain number of troops in reserve to put in key locations around the base to either help the troops that are struggling with a certain area or once you've cleared out all of the defenses and let's say for example you clear out all the defenses but you're down to three or four hog riders or three or four balloons everything else has already been, been shot down by the defenses and now you're praying that these three or four hogs end up cleaning out 15 or 16 other buildings which they won't do so you, at that point you'll put in maybe four, three or four uh, wizards which that might be all you need to go clear out the rest of the base and have a successful three-star attack so planning your raid out and making sure you have a few troops in reserve as cleanup troops is also a big part of the attack so all the key parts of planning the attack it doesn't sound like it's that complicated, but it actually, but every one of those steps can get very complicated because there's a lot of bases that have very well designed defenses that have many different tough parts of the base that have traps on it that have all these different things that can be big pitfalls to your attack, and and as you advance in your level as a as a player, it just gonna, it's just going to get tougher and tougher because the bases are going to get better and better. So you really have to start using other parts other other planning tools to get through some of these bases uh, some of those other planning tools will be first and foremost to talk to your clan mates to watch the replays and talk to your clan mates I can't say that enough um, I have been in clans uh, had players do this in my clan where you have a lot of talented players in the war with you and everyone's trying to organize the war trying to get everyone to do well and a player jumps on, doesn't ask for clan castle troops, and doesn't attack, and it's a glorious fail. Meanwhile, you have seven players watching that are all scratching their heads, wondering, why didn't you ask me what I would have done? Why didn't you ask for help? Why didn't you watch the replay? Why didn't you pull the clan castle troops out? Why did you put all your troops in at one time? And and everyone just doesn't understand. And, and a lot of times it's because, not because the player doesn't want to do well, of course they want to do well, but because they either don't know or, or d didn't go through the proper steps in planning and one of the proper steps in planning is to talk to your clan mates and ask them their opinion on what troops they should you should use or where you should attack the base from uh, and then watch the replays if it's on a, on a base that has already been attacked now another very large factor in these three star attacks and this is a huge factor is if there's been a, a semi successful attack on it in other words, if there's been an attack that's got 94%, then don't reinvent that attack. It's, all, it's obviously a successful attack. You want to watch the attack and find the, the few little places where you may be able to improve on that attack. And then change those little minute details and then try to get that 100% instead of that 94-95%. Now, I know that if they have completely different troops than you do, then that may not be possible. But if that's the case, it might not be the right base for you. So try to add to other people's attacks instead of reinventing them. Um, <laughs> good timing, actually. Uh, the beginners, if you're a beginner, a common mistake that players use, and I know because I live with one that loves, that loves to try to come up with her own attacks. She wants to be the one to, re to, to invent a brand new attack. But it's very difficult to try new combinations of troops that are successful I've heard other youtubers uh, that have been around for a long time say thing say something that rings so true especially now uh, that I've been doing this for a little while if you don't see the attack being done 
if you haven't heard about the attack. If you can't look up the attack's name on the internet and find examples of it, that means the attack probably does not work. And that's a true and tested method, believe it or not. Um, successful attacks, once people figure them out, then the YouTubers bring them to the community and they're everywhere. And what I would suggest is you work on the attacks that we all know works. And then once you've mastered all of the known attacks, if you want to start reinventing attacks and start creating your own attacks, then go for it from there. But, but as a beginner, you want to kind of copy and paste all these attacks. Uh, it may not be the best term, but just, uh, just try, to, try to copy what works well before you try to make up your own. Now, on the screen right now, it says set action points. A lot of people don't know what action points are, but what an action point is, is simply different stages of your attack that you are satisfied with what the troops have done and you want to commence another stage of the attack. Uh, for example, when you draw out the clan castle troops and you pull them into a corner, a lot of people will draw out the clan castle troops using um, one or two hog riders. They'll jump over the wall, that will trigger the clan castle troops and they'll put an archer in a, on a corner builder hut. Uh, that at that point they will start their kill squad by putting in whatever kill squad they decide to use a common kill squad might be uh, a couple of witches and a golem and the golem will help the witches uh, take care of the whatever clan castle troops come out Then they put a couple of wizards in to just add some punch to it they kill the clan castle troops now they have a golem a couple of witches and a couple of wizards as part of their kill squad now they hit the walls and they start taking out all those outside buildings all the trash buildings and they funnel into the into the base you should have a set point where you want to begin the next stage of your attack. That's called an action point. Uh, let's say, for example, you're doing an air raid and you've taken out one of the air defenses. You may want to start with your air portion of the raid by putting in balloons and lava hounds in a certain part of the base. And then let's say your kill squad gets to the second air defense and now that's taken out two air defenses, at that point that might be your second action point where you'll put in the rest of your troops on the on the on the third and fourth air defense that's left in the base so action points are actually points that you are going to pre-designate to have certain things that you want to try to accomplish and you should have a backup plan for everything in other words if you plan on doing an air raid you plan on using a kill squad you, you've already planned you want to jump into the base down in the bottom right hand corner there's two air defenses fairly close to each other you think you can take pull the clan castle troops kill the clan castle troops with your kill squad jump them into the base and take out these two air defenses down the bottom and then you'll just have these two air defenses at the top of the base to, to use all your balloons and lava hounds and all these things with and then all of a sudden your your kill squad fails and they jump into the base they, they jump right back out because something goes wrong next thing you know you have four air defenses still up and you're baffled at what you're going to do so you have to plan for that and it, by planning for that i'm not saying you know write an essay on what you can do if that happens but i am but i am saying that you have to put a little bit of thought into it and have some kind of backup plan as to what happens if this goes wrong and and at at that point what do i do so you have to have a backup plan that has backup goals in it. So yes, uh, your, your troops just jumped out of the core. They didn't take out two of the air defenses. You have four air defenses left. You don't have enough troops to take out the rest of the base because the beginning part of your attack failed. What do you want to do from now? Well, at that point, you may have a, your backup plan may be to go after the town hall. And you may actually drop your troops in a completely different area just to make sure that they power their way to town hall to where you at least get the two stars. So set up action points that will help you uh, further your attack and maybe even salvage attacks that go wrong because uh, I've seen a lot of attacks that when the first stages of the attack go wrong you see a big giant lull in the action and it's them sitting back there completely stumped on what they're going to do and then they just drop everything in, a, in one little corner of the base and kind of just wing it from there. But if you have uh, if you have a plan for all of this stuff, it will go a lot better for you. And so, uh, I think by now, you'll notice that there's much more talk about the planning of the attack than exactly what to do during your attack. And that's the way this game is. Um, it's too complex for me to explain um, exactly what troop to put on what defense to magically get you the three star. Because that's not the way it works. The way it works is that you plan and that during these planning stages you take care you you set up different objectives that you want your troops to accomplish 
and then you plan on how they're going to accomplish it, what directions you're going to put in uh, your, your troops, uh, what their obstacles are going to be, and then at that point you can start projecting what kind of an attack you're going to be able to put out. So as the video is about to wind down, a few last few little points. Uh, one is to objectively look at the base and exploit the base's weaknesses. You should allow the base to dictate to you what troops you're going to use to attack it. You should never try to think how am I going to get my attack, my troops that I use every attack to take out this base and try to think of some new genius way to take out the base. Let the base dictate to you which troops you're going to have to use by its weaknesses and its build and its design. That's another good point. And uh, last thing is to stay humble because you're not going to be able to three star every base. You're going to want to put out 100% effort and you're not going to be able to three star 100% of the time. Uh, unfortunately that's the way it works. But that's also some of the beauty in it and some of, some of the uh, glory in getting the three star because they're not that easy. Especially when you're playing at the highest level. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel, guys. We're getting more and more subscribers. I really appreciate everyone that subbed to the channel, that likes the videos. I get a lot of feedback, uh, and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I really do. So uh, appreciate it from you guys. Uh, enjoyed making the video. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Till next time, it's been easy. Take care, everybody.